Hello YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life and I do lots of thrifting, upcycling, repurposing, and DIY content. If you like that kind of stuff, we love new crafting friends, so make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification so you don't miss any great DIY content. Last week on my weekly wrap up video, I did a whole bunch of fall and Halloween decor and you guys love the little pumpkins that I made out of scrap two by fours. So today I put a tutorial together to show you how I made them because they're so simple and so easy. And um, if you can find some scrap lumber, you can put these together in an afternoon. So I'm going to show you a step by step tutorial on how to make pumpkins out of scrap wood. Let's get started. Our Home Depot has a bin full of um, cut off ends that you can take for free so whenever I'm in there I always check through it and this is some of the pieces that I found on my last trip and I am going to turn them into jack-o-lantern pumpkins. The first thing I like to do is give everything a coat of my black chalk paint. The, you don't have to do this step, I just like putting the black on it so when I sand it down it kind of peeks through and it gives it that rustic feel. And I'm going to use some candle wax to distress them. I like that chippy look, so I'm going to add some candle wax just on the face of each of these boards, just so when I paint over them, it will not have the paint adhere wherever there's candle wax, and it'll leave a distressed finish when you sand it off. I have a full tutorial on my channel on how to do this technique if you want to check that out. I'll put the link down below in the description. Some of the wood that I did my pumpkins out of last week, I found a deck post and I cut that out and they made fantastic little pumpkins too. But any kind of square piece of wood that will be like a shelf sitter works perfect. Now I'm going to add a coat of my orange chalk paint. Um, I have a recipe on how to make that also linked down in the description if you want to know how to make colored chalk paint. And I'm also going to put on a second coat after it's dried too so it's nice and orange giving them a really good sand and we're ready for the graphics. And using the candle wax has made a really beautiful distressed chippy look on these um, pieces of wood. I've printed these graphics off on my laser jet printer and I'm going to do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer to put the faces on the front of these blocks. I've put them in my word program and sized them to exactly the size that I need and we're going to use the Mod Podge mat to um, do this transfer. You've seen, if you've been following along, you've seen me do this um, technique quite a bit, but I do have quite a few um, tutorials on my channel that you can go back and see a more in-depth tutorial on how to do it. Okay, now we're ready to use the Mod Podge and get the transfers working. You're just going to put a light coat over the whole graphic and then you're going to flip it over and make sure it's centered, rub out all the bubbles and wrinkles and then set it aside and you're going to let it sit overnight and let those dry really well um, before we're ready for the next step. These graphics will be available in my Etsy store. Put a link down below and you can grab them and uh, use them to make your own pumpkins. I've made a couple other style of pumpkins too after I finish these ones so make sure you stick through to the end so you can see all the different designs that I made on these scrap wood because they're so cute for your fall decor. Okay so I have these all done and um, I've let them sit overnight now and I'm just taking a damp cloth and you just want to wet it just so you can start to see the graphics show through and then rub off the paper. This is kind of a little bit of a tricky technique and it takes a little bit of practice but once you get the hang of it, it works fantastic and the possibilities are endless of what you can do with this technique for making signs or um, home decor or personalized items. These would also look really cute turned into apples if you wanted to paint them red and do this um, technique and maybe I do have a fresh apple graphic in my Etsy store that would look really cute on these also if you wanted to check that out. Okay, I have all the paper cleaned all off of them and I'm going to put a coat of my polyacrylic water-based sealer to seal them all up and then we're ready to put the finishing touches on. I've just gone into my backyard and found a couple dead branches. I'm going to use my side cutters and just cut them to the length that I want. This is going to be the stem for the top of the pumpkins. You're going to need a little bit of um, wood glue and I'm just going to drill a hole right in the center the same size as that little branch and make a little hole 
put a little bit of the wood glue on the little piece of branch and then stick it in the middle and it's all set. And it's that easy to make a little cute little stem on the top of the pumpkin. To finish them off, I have a little bit of raffia and some yarn and a piece of ribbon in some fall colors. And I'm just gonna tie them along the top of that twig to finish it off. And then you have your beautiful pumpkin shelf sitters. You can go through your Halloween and your fall color decor and stash and just put anything together to make a little tie at the top and get creative. And how adorable and easy are these? Okay, and now I'm gonna do a couple other ones that aren't the pumpkins, just to show you how you can do some different designs on them. This one I'm gonna take a little bit of Vaseline and just put it around the edges of the whole block. I wanna create another way of do doing some distressed wood. I'm gonna layer up some different colors on this block and make a beautiful sign for fall. The first layer I'm gonna put on is some green chalk paint and I'm gonna paint it right over, right to the edge where that um, Vaseline is. I'm gonna put on some more Vaseline again on top of that green, and then I'm going to add another coat of the orange, again, right to the edge, right over that Vaseline. And anywhere that you have the Vaseline, that paint is not gonna adhere, so it's gonna give you that chippy, rustic. And again, the orange paint is dry. I'm gonna put a little bit more Vaseline on again. I kind of always feel you can never have enough layered colors. You don't have to do all of these steps. I'm just trying to achieve a three or four layers of color. And I'm gonna put on some yellow chalk paint that I've made, again, right to the edge. Now I'm just taking a piece of paper towel and I'm just rubbing all along the edge where I put that Vaseline. And as you rub it off, you'll see all the different layers of color start to peek through and it gives it a fantastic finish. And you can see the black peeking through and the green and the orange. I think it looks fantastic and gives me fall vibes. I'm gonna give it a really good sanding with my 80 grit sandpaper. I'm being really aggressive because I want it to be really rustic looking. And then I'm going to put some graphics on it. And this is a graphic that I picked for this one. I love fall most of all. Again, this one's available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab it for your projects and um, give it a try. Print it out on my laser jet printer on regular computer paper. We're gonna do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer again. As you can tell, that's my favorite and I love using it all the time. I'm using my Mod Podge mat, put a liberal coat over the paper and then we're going to flip it over. Make sure you take out all the wrinkles and bubbles and then we're gonna let it set overnight. And just dampening it until you can start to see the graphics and then start rubbing away. You can do this with an inkjet printer. I have a tutorial on how to do that. I'll put a link down below in the description if you wanna try this out and you don't have a laser jet printer. Gonna seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer and we're all ready to put a little bit of an embellishment on the top and it'll be all finished. I'm just gonna wrap some jute twine around the top and then get into my fall stash where I have a few little bits and pieces of some dried flowers or um, leaves and I'm gonna add it to the top and I think that will finish it off really cute. And this one can just be a shelf sitter that could go on a cabinet or on a dresser and I think it's just adorable. I always look when I'm out thrifting, even in off seasons, picking up these little bits and pieces and I tuck them away. I have a bin for each season and then when I open them up when the season comes along, I have all these little treasures that I can use on my projects. Okay, now we're gonna do some decoupaging. I picked up these napkins at our dollar store. I just love them. They kind of have that real Halloween trick or treat feel. I am going to paint a coat of my white chalk paint on top of that block, let it dry completely, and then we're going to decoupage the napkin on. When you're decoupaging a napkin, you wanna make sure you only use that top layer that has the graphics or the print on them. Pull away all the rest. Sometimes I have two or three plies depending on the napkin, so make sure you get them all because if you don't, your decoupage won't work um, very well. And then I'm just gonna cut it out to the size that I need for the block. We're gonna use the Mod Podge mat again, um, and you're just gonna put a liberal coat 
over the whole block and then we're gonna just gently just put the napkin down onto that block you want to be kind of careful because you don't want to have too many bubbles and wrinkles so just do it in um, small steps just take your fingertips and just gently rub out any bubbles and wrinkles that you may have and then I take my brush with a little bit of Mod Podge on it and just make sure that it's heared right down and um, stuck really well if you do get a few little bubbles and wrinkles that's okay I'm not I don't mind if there's any in this project because I kind of want I don't want it to look perfect I kind of want to make it look kind of rustic and then I'm gonna sand off the edges and then seal it with my polyacrylic sealer and then we're ready to add on some embellishments. We're gonna add a twig stem to the top of this one too. Same as before, we're gonna just drill a hole the same size as the twig, put a little bit of wood glue on it, and then stick it in, and it's not gonna go anywhere. And I decided for this stem I wanted to paint it green, so I'm just using a little bit of my green chalk paint that I had left over, and I'm going to just tie some raffia on the top of it, and I think it turned out so cute. I love that raffia on the finish on it. Okay, we're going really fast through these, so hang tight and make sure you stick through to the end, and I'll have a video of all of them completed. For this one, I want to do a crackle paint technique. I'm just using my Elmer's School glue and put on quite a bit, and then just rub it up and down strokes across the wood, and then we're just going to kind of let it sit and dry for about a minute, and then we're going to put on our orange chalk paint on top of that and as that paint dries it's going to leave a fantastic crackled finish that I think is going to look really cute on this pumpkin. I also have a full tutorial on this technique if you want one more in depth I'll put a link down below in the description and now you can see the crackles have come through I'm going to give it a real good sanding with my 80 grit sandpaper and then I'm ready to put on my embellishments. And this one crackled up really well. I'm going to put a uh, stem in the top of it, glue it in so it's nice and secure, and then I'm going to put a coat of the polyacrylic sealer on the top, let it dry, and then I'm going to add some ribbon and twine to the top of it just to give it kind of a rustic feel, and then I'm going to add a tag on the front of it to finish it off. This is a little tag from the dollar store. I'm going to um, paint it first with some black chalk paint and then I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to put some white chalk paint on top of that and then I'm going to sand it down so it has a real kind of rustic feel to it just with a sanding block and then I'm going to put some graphics on this is a happy Halloween graphic it's available in my Etsy store I'm going to do the reverse Mod Podge um, technique on this one also on this little tag and flip it over make sure there's no air bubbles and wrinkles in it let it set it aside let it dry really completely and then we'll finish it off okay i have that tag all finished we're going to put some hot glue on the back of it and stick it to the front of the pumpkin adorable and here is everything all finished and so easy and the wood was free from home depot in the scrap bin and you can get so creative with so many different ideas. Let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite and give it a try. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching today's video and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to read them. I'll be sharing so many more DIY thrifting repurposing videos. So if you aren't already following along, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and that will let you know when I upload my next video. See you real soon. Take care and have a great day.